Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. So we're going to start off 2023 with this simple illustration of a cute snail and I'm going to show you some more of the nifty tools in the Adobe Illustrator package. So the first thing I did was grab a snail from the garden. <laughs> Just kidding, I think they're all still asleep. I went to Google and I looked at lots of photos of our slimy friends. Even though I knew I wanted to create a cartoony style image, it's still a good idea to research and sketch what you're going to draw so that you can identify the uni unique features that make a snail a snail. I've created a new file, uh, 3000 by 2500 pixels. And before I start, I'm going to save the project to my Creative Cloud library so that I know that it's being saved as I work on it. I did some very rough pencil sketches and when I had one I liked, I took a photo of it on my phone and then I dragged it into Illustrator. If you double click on the layer that's created when you drag a picture in, you'll get the option to make this into a template layer so it will lock and become slightly transparent. I'm going to grab my pen tool and start drawing around the outline with a black stroke. As I've mentioned before, the pen tool can be tricky to pick up at first. The way it works is quite intuitive, so the best way to learn is just to practice. Here's a quick close-up to demonstrate the basic way that drawing with the pen works. If I click a point on the page, a line will start. If I then click again in a different place, a straight line will be created between these two points. If I carry on and click down on a third point, my line will turn, into, turn a corner. Now, say I want some curves rather than all straight lines and angles. As I click down on my second point, rather than just one click, I'm going to click and hold and drag the cursor around. This will create what are known as handles, which can be moved around to manipulate the shape of the curve. OK, so let's get drawing. At the moment, I'm ignoring the snail's shell and I'm estimating where the line of the body would be underneath. And I'm also leaving the round blobs at the end of the antennae off for now. I think they're really his eyes, but I'm in control, so they're just going to be blobs. I've used the ellipse tool to draw in his eyes, and I'm using just a pencil tool to create a line to draw the map. And now I'm going to show you the first handy tool, which is the width tool. The width tool is in the same toolbox as the other warping tools and you can use it to vary the thickness of your strokes and this can give your drawing a, a nice dynamic feel. Here I just want to widen one end of the mouth line to give him a sort of surprised look. So I filled in the eyes, I found a nice snaily green colour to fill in his body and I've also added the two blobs at the end of the antennae. And now we've come to the second cool tool that I want to show you. This is the Shape Builder tool, and it's super useful for speeding up your workflow. So at the moment, the snail's body and antennae are one shape, and the two blobs at the end are two separate shapes that we created with the ellipse tool, and I want them to be all one shape. So I'm going to select those three, and then using the Shape Builder tool, I'm just going to run the cursor over all three shapes, and you can see that that just blends them all together and they become one shape. If you'd find it useful to have a video just on the Shape Builder tool and all the other things that it can do, let me know in the comments and I'll put one together. Okay, let's go back to the Width tool and um, give a little bit more width on the bottom of the stroke for the two eyes. And then we're going to add a um, couple of ellipses for the pupils and a slightly transparent circle on top just to give the eyes a little bit of shine. Now I'm just going to add some shapes and splodges and similar green colours to give the body some texture. So I'll speed the next bit up so we can get onto the shell. Thank you. 
So I've created a new layer for the shell and I've hidden the body that we were just working on. So first of all I'll draw a circle and now I'm going to use the shape builder tool again but in a slightly different way. I'm going to draw the part that I want to remove from the circle. I'm just using the pencil tool to do this. Then I'm going to select both shapes like before but instead of joining them if I hold down the option key this will let me highlight the part of the shape that I want to remove. Click on it once and it disappears. Now I'll take the transparency down a bit of the shape that we've just made and I'm going to grab the spiral tool. You can find that in the toolbox along with the line tool. Create a spiral using a black stroke and then by using the direct selection tool you can manipulate individual points until it matches up with the drawing. Once that's done, make a copy of it and drag it off to the side. We'll be using it again in a moment. Now I could use the width tool again, but there's another way to alter the thickness of your strokes. In the properties panel on the right, click on stroke and you'll see a drop down menu called profiles. Have a play around with the options until you like the look of your stroke shape. Now I'm just going to bring back the unaltered spiral that we saved from before and place it back on top of the new wider spiral and update all the colours. Okay, so the last little bit I'm going to show you is how you can add a really unique texture pattern to your drawing. Firstly, I'm going to create my own brush. There are tons of options available for creating brushes in Illustrator and it's great fun. Um, today I'm just going to give you a quick fire introduction so you can get started and experiment with it yourself. So off to the side here I'm going to draw some rounded rectangles at various sizes that overlap in a random way. I've taken the transparency down and after selecting the whole lot I'll drag them into the brushes panel. As I mentioned before this is quite a complex area of Illustrator so to keep it quick I'm just choosing scatter brush and I'm keeping all the settings at the default. We want this texture to just be applied to the shell shape so select it and down at the bottom of the left menu bar there's a tiny little button called drawing modes. If you choose draw inside now then all the marks you make will stay inside the selected shape. Using the paintbrush tool and my newly created brush, I'm going to apply that pattern to my shell with some short strokes. Now the final touches are a couple of shiny highlights and a simple background and we're done. I simplified this picture a bit for the tutorial so that it didn't take too long, but if you want to see the final version I made, I've put a link in the description to the file on Adobe Stock in case you're interested. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!